Uh, okay, I'd like to welcome everybody back today. Uh, today we have Mr. Matthew Haynes, who is the program manager of Older Alabamians System of Information and Services, otherwise known as OASIS, can be a little bit of a mouthful yes. there. Uh, and Mrs. Jane Bush, a vision rehab therapist here at ADRS. And today we're going to be talking about assisting persons 55 and older and visually impaired on living more independently in your home. And at this point, I'd like to hand it back over. Mr. Haynes, if you would introduce yourself. Uh, I'm Matthew Haynes, and I'm the program coordinator for the OSS program and uh, with the primary health services. And are you originally from Alabama? I am. Uh, uh, born and raised here in Birmingham. And how long have you been with OASIS? Uh, wow. Uh, well, in this position, I've been here since 2014, but uh, previously I worked as a vision rehab therapist like Jane does and uh, for three years. Okay. Uh, that was for, after I took a little break for a while with a rehab counselor. Uh, in between that though. Um, Very experienced in the field. I, I would think so. <laughs> yeah. and, and Mrs. Bush, if you would introduce yourself. I'm Jane Bush. I'm a vision rehabilitation therapist with the OASIS program. And I serve um, Jefferson, Shelby, and Blount counties. And are you originally from Alabama? Born and raised. Heck yeah. Now you guys, <laughs> did you guys watch the game last night? I did. Mm -hmm. I watched it to the first half. I was like, I, okay. I, I watched the whole thing. It was really good. Wow. Yeah, so, so did I. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to come back a little bit there. I mean, it was a tough game the first like quarter. They were neck and neck, and then they mm -hmm. kind of blew it. Typical mm -hmm. Saban fashion. They oh, just took yeah, off. Yeah. Now, was that a good win for you guys, or you kind of? Well, I'm in a mixed marriage. <laughs> I, I graduated from Auburn. My husband graduated from Alabama. Yeah. So. You got to yeah, support. It gets kind of quiet yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we're all Auburn fans, so by halftime I was like, okay, they lost. So, so yeah. Ohio State lost. So that's Alabama won. That was that's it. So. It's tough because you want to support the SEC and you know Alabama. Yeah, yeah. Well, they got it. They they took care of it. So they, they had it. So. Yeah. Um, let's get into a little bit about Oasis, and if you guys could give us a little bit of history on how Oasis came to be. Well, um, Oasis really started in about the 1980s. There were some grant programs around the country. Uh, demonstration projects at first, and then they finally started having still competitive grants towards the end of the 80s. And in 1987, we were given our first competitive grant for these type of services uh, for people who were visually impaired and that were older. And prior to this, they had a lot of services for folks that were in fact rehab services who wanted to go to work. Mm -hmm. And they saw a need as the population was getting older to have services for people that were older. Uh, they didn't want to go to work, but they still needed the same type of services. So they started for formulating those grants, and we got ours in 1987, as I said earlier. Um, we were one of the only five states that were continually funded after that, thanks to our leadership uh, that led the Oasis program. And when they designed it, they gave it that long name, uh, the, the Older Alabamian System of Information and Services. They really wanted to create a program that helped our consumers not only get the services about independent living and vision loss that Jane will be showing us later on, but um, but also get connected to other agencies and programs that typically older individuals who are blind may not have easy access to, like yeah. um, aging services and those kinds of things. Or older Americans Act type programs that are still available. So we have a lot of connections around the state now to help us with connecting our consumers to those programs. Um, that started all through the 80s and, and 90s and. In 2000, we were formula funded, which is basically means it's no longer a grant that we have to turn in every year. We're all, all states have the program now, similar to Oasis, maybe not just like us, but uh, similar. And so now we get about, you know, like I said, about a 9 to 1 ratio of uh, federally funded. So we're 90% federally funded, basically. That's a nice ratio for the state. And I imagine um, you said there were only five states that originally had uh, in, in 87. Uh, yeah, well, they originally were continually, continually funded. Unfortunately, during those grant years, there were states that would get their grants and then lose it back and forth, back and forth. Uh, but thankfully, we had a lot of continuity because of our leadership. Yeah. Uh, Rita Houston was a big part of that and writing the grant and keeping us continually funded. We were, um, that's really kind of the foundation that we still partly stand on today because we were able to have a continuous program and how we had those services and have those connections to other agencies that we still work with today uh, to help our consumers 
reach out to other agencies that they might need assistance with. I think that's really important to kind of touch base on the consistency of, you know, is that service going to be available for me next year? I've really, um, you know, benefited mm -hmm. from that service, but can I rely on it long term? And for Alabama, uh, Oasis ADRS to stick with it um, and, and advocate for it on that national level, and now all states have it. Uh, yeah. So, so mm -hmm. that's an amazing thing that Alabama has done and that you guys have done as, a, as an organization. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff that you guys have done here in the state has affected everybody across the country that could benefit from these services. That's pretty cool. Okay, it is pretty Pat, cool. Pat, you guys will be a part of that. There, it's cool to be a part of that because it really does have a lot of history. Um, in the country, a lot of folks don't really know that, but it's really cool. Our leadership from, like I said, Rita Houston, Jim Carr, and, and, and others that really helped us become the predator that we are today, that we're still kind of known around the country. It's one of the better programs, or we like to think of it, as some people tell us, but. Um, it's really our staff that make the difference and really get out there and provide the services to our consumers every day. And that's really what makes the Oasis work, is our staff and getting out there and helping our consumers become more independent. Now you mentioned consumers. Let's talk a little bit about um, the age group of consumers. So we have 55 in the headline and older, but it also mentions visually impaired. That's right. So if we could talk a little bit about the age group. Well, you know, for us, you know, 55 and older is in some ways, they, they made, uh, it's really the, a big demographic of people. Most of our consumers are actually between 65, 75 and older. Uh, the 55 to 65 is typically kind of a smaller group for us. Although here in Alabama, I was looking at statistics before our interview, in Alabama about 30% overall is over 50, age 55. And according to the American Community Survey, um, Al in Alabama they estimate about 6% of those over 65, a little over 6%, reported some kind of visual problem that they can't correct with glasses. Um, that could be a number of different things specifically, but that is uh, about 6%. It goes a little bit higher as they get older to six, almost 7%. Mm. So really most of our consumers are older, um, not closer to 55, but we do serve all those ages. Um, now, do you, would you serve somebody that was 30 or they go through voc rehab? Well, the, for, folks, for folks that are younger uh, that want to go to work, we have vocational rehabilitation to help them receive the same services. And in some ways, our funding allows our folks who are not wanting to go to work that are over 55 to get those VR kind of services through their vision rehab therapist and their rotation mobility specialist. Uh, thanks to our partnership with AIDB, we're able to provide services to those that are younger than 55 who don't want to go to work. Um, we call them general services, uh, but uh, they pr they're provided pretty much the same services that our Oasis consumers get and our VR consumers get. It's just a different uh, funding arrangement we have with AIDB so we can provide those services. So specifically, I just want to make sure I'm clear for Oasis, um, you won't be serving people under 55. Those services are available, but through different organizations and well, funding. Different funding sources, basically. We all provide the same services through all of our, our staff. Now, Jane here is completely funded by the Oasis program, and I have two other staff that also do that. They've, they don't serve any other population because that's how their position is funded. Yeah. But our other vision rehab therapists and O&Ms are all, we have a joint funding agreement with AIDB that allows them to not only mainly serve ER, but they could also serve Oasis in general. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, about how many individuals are served a year through Oasis? It's generally, ballpark is around 1,000 people. It really will vary, but we've, in the past few years, we've averaged somewhere like 1,060, something like that. Uh, typically from year to year. Um, and what locations are there throughout the state? Well, they're, they're all across the state, mainly in our book rehab offices. Mm -hmm. I've totaled them up. They're about in 12 different offices around the state. Um, and really, they can be contacted. You can call most of those offices and find out who the vision rehab therapist and the orientation mobility specialist is to uh, when you call those local offices. So you don't have to be in one of the three big cities of, no. you know, Mobile or Montgomery, or four big cities, Mobile, That's Montgomery, right. We have Montgomery. folks in Muscle Shoals, you know, Decatur, Opelika office, the Montgomery office. Uh, we do have them in Mobile, Dothan, um, in the Montgomery office. So our, our staff travel a lot, too. Yeah. They cover a lot of area. <laughs> so uh, they may not be in some of our smaller offices, but they do cover 
all of our counties are covered. Mm. Let's dig in a little bit um, into orientation and mobility instruction. This is kind of something I picked up online. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys could go over, you know, well, let's start from a consumer standpoint. Um, what are some things that I, as a consumer, might be feeling or going through that would make me think that I needed to contact Oasis? Some well, difficulties that I've been having. Well, Jen can, can add on this, but I think a lot of folks start having difficulties with reading mm -hmm. a lot of times, and they go to their eye, eye doctor, and there's nothing they can, so far, they, nothing that they can do as far as correcting their vision. And usually it's, it's often it's reading that, that comes to our attention, but also mobility. And Jane, if you can kind of share what you normally see. Yeah, so, you know, when you go into people's homes, you find out a whole lot more about the problems that they're having related to their vision. Mm -hmm. And you can even point out things that they really didn't realize they were having difficulty with. Um, but just like I have certification as a vision rehab therapist, orientation mobility instructors have their own certification as well. And they teach travel skills for blind people with using a long white cane. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, vision rehab therapists can also teach human guide techniques, um, self-protective techniques, other techniques to help them uh, navigate their home environment or familiarize themselves with a new environment uh, in, more independently. Um, you know, a lot of times people will say, well, I go into a restaurant with my daughter and I can't see anything. Right. So if you can show them something really easy, mm -hmm. um, a way that the daughter can guide them through this, the restaurant, well, it's not really um, overt. Invasive. Yeah, and, and it's really not obvious to anybody. Um, so, but it helps a lot. So those are the kinds of things that we might do. Um, I like how you touch on, uh, you know, almost teaching family members is a very support group effort there uh, because so, they're going to be around that consumer more often mm -hmm. than you would yeah, yeah. on a daily basis. A lot of times we end up talking to family members um, because they don't understand their parents' vision loss. Um, they don't understand why they can't read this print, but they see something on the floor over here. Or, you know, if you can, we have a, a vision simulator card that has the different eye diseases that help. It's not exact, but it does help them to have a better idea of what their loved one is experiencing. Yeah. Uh, and that's really important for them to understand how the things that we can do can make them be much more independent than they really think they are. Yeah, and if someone didn't understand, oftentimes if you're not familiar or understand something, you can get frustrated with the situation. Mm -hmm. Do you guys Very notice much. that sometimes? Where yeah. like a family mm -hmm. member's like, I just yeah. don't get it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so it's almost like a counseling, family mm -hmm. counseling kind of thing yeah. and teaching there. Mm -hmm. Very much. Um, so what would be some examples just off the top of your head about navigating around the house? Well, just to be able to, oh, one thing that people have a really hard time with is if they drop something, mm. especially if they've dropped a pill and they don't know where it went or anything about it. So you can teach them uh, techniques to find those things uh, where they would search in a grid pattern. You know, be very careful and, you know, deliberate in the way you're filling your medicine organizer, if that's what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, so that you can pay attention and listen for where um, you might want to look in that direction. Um, and sometimes they can't hear that either. So um, and you have to show them how to get down on the floor and look for it with your hands. And that can be a tricky thing too as you get older. Exactly. You know, a mm -hmm. fall will really put you back. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 you know, that's another thing that I feel like is really important is talking to these people about um, sitting, how, the, how they sit in a chair um, and why that's important because I don't want them to end up on the floor. Yeah. Um, so those are things that we talk about. You have great posture. You both do. I slouch. <laughs> <laughs> My lower back hurts me like all day. <laughs> um, so taken from a consumer standpoint, if they are noticing that they may be eligible for Oasis services, what would be their process? Would they just call you guys? Yeah, the, the, they can call us. Uh, you know, we do have a 1-800 number they can call, which is 1-800-671-6837. Uh, uh, and they'll get reached us, call, ask for Oasis at the front desk, and they'll 
usually be directed to me or to our, our assistant, Tiffany Childs. It will just take down their information and get to know them a little bit and then try to find out where they live to, to get the referral to the, to the vision rehab therapist or O&M o that they serves a different area. Mm -hmm. um, and then what would be kind of, like does somebody need to be on a waiver to receive these services or is it out of pocket mm -hmm. or how does that work? No, well, it's completely funded by the department with our, with our services. We don't do anything as far as uh, waiver programs or billing insurance or anything like that. A lot of folks think that we're, that's what we're doing. Uh, we don't do anything like that. It's all funded through our, you know, our federal funds to provide this. So there is no cost to the consumer? No. Mm -hmm. Who is eligible, who is not eligible? Well, obviously you have to be over 55. Yeah. And you have to have a visual impairment. Um, and there's no set uh, acuity level or anything like that. But the impairment has to interfere with your daily life activities in some ways. And like Shane was mentioning, it could really be any other kinds of uh, variety of different ways that could happen. Uh, most of our consumers, you know, will come to us and they have macular degeneration, mm -hmm. uh, which is the most common vision loss that we see, about 44% or so of our consumers have uh, macular de degeneration, but they come with, with a variety of different other conditions like glaucoma or uh, diabetes as well. Uh, but it's really up to them talking to their vision rehab therapist and they do an assessment with them to determine if they're eligible or not, or if their vision impairment is really significant enough for us to really assist them or uh, find other services they might need, such as way to get glasses or, uh, for example, cataract surgeries or whatever they might need to get to that we don't provide, but they can find other sources to get the services they need. I'm going to acknowledge chat really quick, and when we hop back in, Mrs. Bush, I'm going to ask you about that examination. That would be the next step after that phone call and setting mm -hmm. up that. Um, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Ryan Alford. Thank you, uh, Ryan, for being here. He says, watching Tuesday morning today, Rita B. Patton, great program. Mm -hmm. um, Ryan Alford, ADRS Office Statewide, Alabama, and Rita B. Patton again, I miss you, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, uh, Mrs. Patton. Um, so the call comes through and you set up an examination. What does that examination look like, Mrs. Bush? Well, we call it an assessment. Mm -hmm. um, but because yeah. we're a government agency, um, there's a lot of paperwork that's involved. So typically I tell my consumers before I go to see them, we're just going to be doing paperwork the first time I come to see you. And a lot of times there's panic. They think, I can't see to fill out the paperwork. So, you know, they're not filling out paperwork. What they're doing is talking to me and I'm collecting information and the process of doing all of that. We talk through what is called our visual and functional assessment and um, that lays out a plan for the kinds of services that we will be providing. And then each time before I leave, I'll schedule our next session so they know when I'm coming back. Um, they have an idea of the kinds of things that we'll be working on at that next session. Um, and we, I continue to go back and work with them in their homes um, until we've completed the things on their plan. And then we close their case. But just because the case is closed, it doesn't mean that they can never receive services again. Mm -hmm. It just means that for now, they've accomplished the goals that they wanted. If more goals come up down the road or their vision changes or they move or anything changes, we can go back and update services. Mm -hmm. It's not an active file, uh, you know, case right. at that point. Yeah. Um, what kind of questions, you know, because when I go and I think about an assessment, my mind flashes all the way back to like high school and college where I have to take these <laughs> exams or I have to give an oral presentation and I start freaking out. I get nervous. I perform worse, you know. Mm -hmm. So what would be some examples of questions that somebody would think, okay, that's not that bad. I'm not, uh, you know. Yeah. Um, you talk about all the things that they're having difficulty with on a daily basis in their home that their vision interferes with. Um, we have to collect a lot of other data because of the grant. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, those are all questions that um, people know the answer to off the top of their head. The only piece of information we ask for that typically people may not know is their social security number. Mm -hmm. But that's the way the agency keeps up and tracks people uh, so that we can provide a continuum of services throughout the course of their life. 
Now, you mentioned a few things that uh, may be answers to those questions. How is your daily life affected? You mentioned the pills. What are some other examples that somebody would say that would definitely qualify them for Oasis services? Um, well, the only three things that qualify them are resident of the state of Alabama, 55 and older, and vision loss that interferes with their daily living activities. Just because somebody has an eye disease, it doesn't mean that um, they need these services right now. Mm. So if your vision's not interfering with um, being able to read print or operate your household appliances or those kinds of things, then you really don't need our services right now. Mm. Be aware that they're available and when those things start causing you difficulty, then call us. Yeah. I, f I feel like um, it's a natural process of aging and your eyes will start to go and, and you know, if you have the benefit and the luck to, to reach that point, uh, you know, in your 80s or wherever, wherever that hits you, um, these services are there for you. Mm -hmm. My grandmother's 89. She has great, her ears, not so much, but yeah. her eyes, great. Mm -hmm. uh, so she wouldn't uh, yeah. do that. She says what a lot. Grandma, if you're watching, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> let's take a, a quick break and let's look at some of these gadgets okay. that would be helpful for people around their house. And what we're going to do, um, guys in the chat and ladies in the chat, is we're going to actually take the camera um, over to Mrs. Bush and she's going to introduce some of the uh, gadgets that we here have on the table. <clears throat> I'm actually going to walk over with the mic as well. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge Renee Dupree Hathcox. Uh, Mrs. Hathcox says, great service for our older Alabamians with vision loss. I'm a retired vision rehabilitation therapist out of Gadsden. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look here. Okay, so it's important for people to be able to keep up with dates, know when they have appointments, know when something's coming up so we can help them with a large print calendar. Um, so these calendars are available through Cleveland Sight Center um, and to use a dark pen like this if you move over here to the this is a shopping list with bold line paper mm -hmm. and this is a notepad with the same thing but if you enhance the contrast sometimes that's all people need yeah. is just to enhance the contrast or make things a little bit bigger. So, get a black uh, Sharpie marker. Well, these pens are a little bit different from a Sharpie and they do something different to the ink and it doesn't bleed like a Sharpie. What the heck? That one's called a Proline pen. This one's called a Pilot Bravo. And so you guys so have I've, contacts for getting all of these supplies. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we'll give people a few of these and then help them know where to get them in the future. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, one of the things that we do the first time I go see people is this is a signature guide. Oh, and that's cool. it's the same size as a credit card, so you can keep it in your wallet. You always know where it is. And when you go someplace and somebody needs your signature, you just pull out your signature guide hand it to them and say, put this where you want my signature, and it kind of puts them back in control again. Yeah. So it's, you know, just little things like that can make a huge difference in somebody's life. I like the way you say put back in control again, because sometimes you may feel like, well, I'm uncomfortable in that situation, but mm -hmm. if you can take that back and, you know, mm -hmm. that's amazing. So, and then, you know, some, this has got our little logo on it, but you can turn it over that way. Sometimes we'll use that as a reading guide. Mm -hmm. So, just to help people track across a line of print. So, um, we've got other large print d catalogs. Well, don't skip over. I want to see Okay, more. well, this is the, I told you about this I while ago. I want to see more. <laughs> okay, this is the um, vision simulator card. So, you hold it up to your eye, and um, it simulates a degree of that vision loss. But there are other ways that you can show that to people. Um, there are apps that you can help them to see that are more real time, mm -hmm. uh, looking at things in the room. Yeah. Um, and so it, it, there are a lot of different things that you can do to help people explain and understand um, different vision loss. And just because you've got one doesn't mean that you can't have another. Well, I imagine this is great for family members. It is, is. exactly. No. Mm -hmm. Is it? Uh, it's the same thing on both sides, right? Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. have to use one side or the other. Mm -hmm. That top one is a sample of macular degeneration. 
And but the, that, the difference mean, is when you look through it, you can look around the clear spot. Yeah. yeah. People with macular degeneration can't. Really? Yeah. I mean, that's a big blind spot. I would not feel comfortable driving. Uh, well, you shouldn't probably. Yeah. If you've got that big of a blind yeah, spot, you should not. A few have tried, though, right? <laughs> Unfortunately. But, but that's the thing you have to understand is all of these eye diseases have different degrees. And, you know, there are people with macular degeneration who their vision can be corrected to 2020 and they're still able to drive mm -hmm. with no difficulty. Is that through surgery or is it not No, invasive? just with glasses. Oh, oh really? Yeah. yeah. Optics are amazing. I did not think that. Yeah. So, but as macular degeneration progresses, then that scotoma or the spot that you're talking about in the very center can get larger. Mm. It doesn't always, but sometimes it does. And so, you know, you have to teach people how to use other devices. That's a great tool. It reminds me of when we were in um, high school and, and health class and they gave you these goggles that would sing mm -hmm. if you were to you know, have a few beers and then try and walk down the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of... <laughs> we don't I do that. that class. No, yeah, we don't do that. But yeah. <laughs> um, go ahead. This is a large print address book. A lot of clients are in their 80s and 90s and they're stuck in print. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to redo their address book um, using a bold line pen makes a huge difference for yeah. them. Um, and it's got the tabs down the side so they're able to find the numbers that are so important. Mm -hmm. You can teach people how, if they still have a landline, and a lot of my clients do, mm -hmm. you can teach them techniques to dial the phone. Mm -hmm. So um, those are just little things that you can do in people's homes that really don't cost anything. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, it's like getting to the basics and just tweaking it a little bit yeah. can make a big difference. So then we go to magnifiers. And magnifiers come in a range of strengths. Um, that one happens to be a 3X stand magnifier. It's made to sit flat on the print. Okay. Yeah. Try it on that page over there. Yeah, I got a print, yeah. page of print right here. here. So right here, here we so have. So sit it down flat on the print. <laughs> oh, wow. And so it's I like lighted. The light in it too. Well, the light is just as important as the magnification. Now, this one that you, that one is a 3X handheld and you have to adjust the distance between the magnifier and the print to get it in focus for you. Gotcha. So if you can read with the 3X magnifier, you're doing great. The problem is a lot of people want a really big magnifier that's really, really strong, uh -huh. and you can't do that because of the physics of the way magnifiers are made. This one is a 7X, and you see the difference in the size mm -hmm. of the 3 and the 7. This one will make something three times as big. This makes it seven times as big. I want so to try what it. Yeah. We'll try it. So what happens with that is... Does it lay flat as well? Mm -hmm. As Because it makes it bigger, you see less and less at one time. Yeah, you're reading almost letters instead yeah. of words. Yeah, yeah. So but you, if you get closer to it, you can see more at one time. Mm -hmm. So if you get all the way down here... Go ahead and go. Yep. You can see more. See how it opens up mm -hmm. there. So those are just little techniques that you can teach people to do. Um, now, do these uh, these come through Oasis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do so it, that's part of an assessment that we do. Assessment. Okay. So, um, so that's one of the things that we help clients get. All of these different things are things that we help. Yep. Um, Help them learn about what's available. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't replace things, but we try to teach them. Hey, this is what's available. And here, here's how you can get a new one when you need to get a new one, mm -hmm. that type of thing. So this is a cool magnifier right here. It's electronic. Mm -hmm. um, and got to turn it on. So Now, does this, will this variable zoom? Will it go mm -hmm. from a 7 to a 3? This one will go from, starts at a 5, I think. Hang on, we'll see. It was working earlier, wasn't it? I know, it was, see, we were but just it's talking not about anymore. Technology. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It almost seems... This one's not working right, Matt. I don't let know me what, see it. Um, but um, it's very, see very similar uh, as only, the Only the difference with this kind of a magnifier, this is electronic, and so it's like a video magnifier. Mm -hmm. And so you can adjust the contrast uh, and the strength. So mm -hmm. that one will go from 5, 7, 9, and 12x. Now, do you notice that most consumers enjoy the these or the digital? Well... See, it depends on your vision and 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. The degree of vision loss that you have. So this one, that one's 7x, that's 9, that's 12. So you see 5x, you're going to see more, yeah. but sometimes people can't read that. Mm. So then you can adjust the contrast with this. Oh, that's like a, um, what's it? It's not a Kindle. Is it a Kindle with the white background? Yeah. You can mm -hmm. kind of see it better? Yeah. So you can reverse the oh, contrast. Oh, that's cool. Or you, you can use. Wow. Yeah. So there are yeah. a lot of different little things like that that one of these magnifiers would do that the stand and handheld that I showed you will Good not line. do. But, you know, you can't, everybody can't have one of these. Why so not? you've got to. <laughs> How, how much are they? Um, they run about five hundred dollars less. Yeah, isn't that right? Which, which brain you get? About yeah. So that is a limiting mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. right. Very yeah. much. So if you can read with one of these magnifiers, you're doing well. Some people can't, so we'll go to something like this. Mm -hmm. So, but it's much more limited. Another cool thing that this one does is it'll take a picture. Oh, that's cool. And you can pick it up and then you can adjust the magnification again. So um, I've had clients who use this, go to the grocery store, can't see the label on the counter, and so they'll take a picture and then pull it up closer and adjust the contrast or whatever they need to do yeah. to help them see it better. I want that in like <laughs> uh, contacts. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't need glasses yet, but I, I would wear that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. like eagle eye, you can see out the yeah. building in the next state over. Another thing that's important, everybody needs to know what time it is. Mm -hmm. So if you ha can, can have good light and low vision, you might be able to see the face of this clock. Mm -hmm. If you can't, you can push the button on top. 10, 40 a.m. Oh, that's Today cool. is Tuesday, January 12, year 2021. So, and it's, it's an atomic clock, so when time changes, it changes for you. How does it link up? That's amazing. Um, because it's set by radio waves. Oh, okay. And so they're strongest between 2 and 4 a.m. So overnight, it's going to readjust. Yeah. So it's a cool little device. Heck yeah. Um, what about this guy? This is just a sample of the way we mark people's appliances. So a lot of times a control on a, a dial control in their home. Like for the stove or something? For the oven, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh -huh. So then you might use these raised dots. First of all, you spend a lot of time talking to people about how they use their appliances. Yeah. And, you know, everybody's going to use their microwave a different way. <laughs> so, um, you know, you try to figure out a way to help them use their microwave with raised dots. And they might be orange, they might be clear. I've got all different colors, so. So those dots you'll just put on a knob, like these individual dots, mm -hmm. and you would put a dot at like 250 and 350? And then you would put one at a stable location so they could line the dot up yeah. the, as it moved around. That's Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like tactic, yeah. tactic mm -hmm. feedback. It's tactile, yeah. yeah, tactile operation of their appliances. Yeah. And so we'll do that with washers, dryers, any appliances in the kitchen or throughout the home. I mean, and, and I can't imagine that these are too expensive, these little sticky no, dots. So these are like a great invention that, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, it's very yeah. practical. Simple. Yeah. It works. Yeah. And it's thinking about the, the problem in a different light. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say That's the problem, right. but the challenge. Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, and being creative about the solution. Right. Yeah. Do you guys ever go to somebody's house and you're like, I never thought of that solution. That's great. We're going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you learn stuff every day. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's keep going. All right. So another thing that we do is involve people with uh, knowing about other services that are available. Mm -hmm. So um, Script Talk um, is a way to access your prescriptions. And so you can either do Script Talk that reads the label to you. You can do Script View, which allows you to have large print labels on your prescriptions. Mm -hmm. and it has everything written out and the, the label's very durable. So it'll last it's no matter how many times they have to take it off. Now, how does this get on? Let's say I'm going to my pharmacy to pick this up. How does this label get on? You have to have a pharmacy that is participating with them. Okay. Um, but, you know, in the future, everybody's going to have to have this. You think? Do, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. The pharmacies mm -hmm. are going to mm -hmm. have to be. Yeah. 
uh, uh -huh. the service there. Mm -hmm. So uh, the pharmacist would put um, on the for the script talk, they would put an RFID dot on there, mm -hmm. um, and then you can. There is a device that they have that you just run it over the top and it reads the label to you. Or if they're iPhone users. Or smartphones, any smartphone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's test. Yeah, heck yeah, let's test this. No medication. Okay. Okay. I love it when it works. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if it has to be on the back side of the camera. Usually how it works. Yeah, see right here. Mm, interesting. Anyway, it will it will read. Um, there are two modes for that. It'll either read it with um, the full information. Or it can also do um, partial information. So if you just wanted to know what that drug was, then you could do the, the short scan. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you needed to know everything your doctor had said in the prescription, it's recorded in there. Mm. So One thing I'd like to ask, um, <clears throat> as the younger generations get older and they start to have vision lost do you feel like the technology will start to replace some of these it, other I'm, things? I'm definitely seeing that now it's yeah none of these things were available when I first started doing this yeah so um, yeah and this is um, a library player this comes from the National Library Service um, and there's no cost involved but we'll fill out an application and the books come recorded on a device like this. It's about the size of an old cassette tape. Mm -hmm. um, but this one has actually three complete translations of the Bible on it. Really? On one device. So, and this book, book player will allow you to navigate through the whole thing. Huh. Um, so it's really cool to be able to teach people how to do this. Used to, before, before this machine came out, they used cassette tapes. Mm -hmm. um, and then before that, they had record players. Yeah. So, you know, those are the kinds of things that have changed. Mm -hmm. But now you can listen to this on your smartphone. Yeah. So, but a lot of people in that age group didn't grow up with smartphones. Exactly. So it's very unfamiliar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think maybe in another 30 to 40 years, very few people would be using that. You're exactly like right. That yeah. And be yes. more on your phone. But um, as that, that, you know, my grandmother doesn't know our way around a smartphone, mm -hmm. and I am not nearly as crafty on my phone as my younger brothers right. are. Um, so yeah. it's just changing like crazy. It really is. So now this is a cool device. It's called an iBill. It's available through the Bureau of Graving and Printing, and um, it will read the, 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 nom the denomination of the bill. How? <laughs> is there like a code in the bill that it reads? You have to have it in there just right. You, there's a lip on both sides and at the top. Huh. <laughs> now you can do this for like fake cash. And it's like this is monopoly money. <laughs> that's awesome. So, you know, that's important, but nobody wants to take one of these with them to go through the checkout line. Yeah. So we'll teach them how to organize their wallet in such a way that they would know what denomination of bill they were pulling out of their wallet before they pulled it out. Yeah, whether they do ones and then mm -hmm. fives, and you have, you have five of each. Or well, whatever. actually, we teach them to fold the bills. Oh, that's a great So idea. that every denomination has a different shape. Yeah. And in your wallet, you can reach in safely and know what you're pulling out before the rest of the world does. Hey, you guys are like, okay, okay. So. You guys are making origami at home here. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard this. <laughs> So um, I worked with a lady at one point in time. She was like, I don't, I don't need that. I just don't need that. So I was like, okay, that's fine. So the next time I came to see her, she went, sit down <laughs> and tell me how to tell the difference in my bills. And she had been to a restaurant, and um, she thought she was leaving a $5 tip. Oh, jeez, like 100 She left a $50 tip. Oh. She said, well, the, pl the plus size is... Um, 
everybody was really nice to me. Yeah, the <laughs> so they're thinking, oh, shoot, we hope she comes back. Yeah. Great lady, great lady. <laughs> <laughs> and now, what about the coins there? Okay, well, the coins are very different. You, there are little differences that you probably don't notice. Mm. So your nickel and your penny both have smooth edges. Uh -huh. So you can easily run your nail across that and tell, okay, that the bigger one is the nickel and the smaller one's the penny. The quarter has a rough or milled edge and so does the dime. I never picked up on that So before. these are the ones that are most commonly confused. Yeah. So I tell them, remember the smooth one is the less expensive. <laughs> has it always so. been like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Since minting. So yeah. somebody had the foresight to see that. Or oh. they did it by accident. They I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> huh. So. I'd like to learn the history of when those coins started doing that. Yeah. Um, no. That is very cool. We have a, a few uh, questions here in chat. I'm going to go ahead and pull this cord back a little bit. Um, Sharon Glenn Henderson says, high school, LOL. I'm not sure of that reference. She also says, my mother and ex-husband had different types of degeneration, so she's definitely feeling what you guys are saying. Um, and she says these look helpful for. She says these look helpful for them. How can they get access to these? So she Just has a call. mother. Just call. Yeah. And that's the one eight hundred. The one eight hundred six seven one six eight three seven. It is imp it is important though yeah. to make sure that whoever you're calling about wants those services that's right. and it's, that's it's right. much more helpful if the person <laughs> that wants the services calls to request them right that, there's um, been several times people call me let me check with my dad first yeah they find out what we do yeah. so we you know they can call us and we'll tell them how to access the services but it is best if the individual calls mm -hmm. us it's not Im imperative but it's very helpful. Well, I mean, even if they, you guys thought that they did qualify and that some things could definitely improve their life, if they're not willing to take those on. Exactly. Like my grandmother, she is bullheaded. Um, mm -hmm. She is not making any changes. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, so that can be a little bit of a struggle there, too. And it might be, too, that your grandmother is li listening to you as her grandson. Yeah. Um, where if somebody from outside comes in and talks to her about exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. she'll listen. Yeah. So, and I, hear, I have a lot of family members who say they're very frustrated at the end of a session. They'll follow me outside and say, those are the exact same things <laughs> yes. I've been telling my yeah. mother all yeah. along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah. it's, it's yeah. just easier to hear it from somebody who, you know, you didn't grow up with. Yeah. And I do that too. People will tell me, people close to me, like, you, you know, try this, try this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> I'll read something online and be like, oh, I got to try this. I'm like, I've been telling you that for months. <laughs> Like, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the assessments. Um, since the individual is the one that actually has to go through the assessments, mm -hmm. are you going out to the house for every consumer or are they mm -hmm. coming here? Either way, if they feel more comfortable coming in here, but typically we're going out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you said that there are a few sessions. About how many sessions are there? It depends on how many goals are uh, you know, set through that initial assessment. So, um, you know, I might just go out two or three times, but I might have to go out five or six. Um, I've gone out more than that, yeah. <laughs> just depending on uh, what we needed to cover. And about how long, I know this is going to be a tricky question, about how long would you say that a consumer's file is active on average? Is it typically like for three months or would you say? It's really, like she said, it really varies, I think. Yeah, I think our average is amount, amount of instruction that our consumers get, like through their course of their program, maybe about six or seven hours of individualized instruction. Mm -hmm. But like Jane was saying, it could be months, depending on, because uh, it really varies how quickly we're able to schedule the next appointment. Uh, we're, sometimes we're often dealing with their own medical, other medical issues they have going on or family issues. Uh, recently, you know, with COVID-19, trying to arrange you know things as far as that going on as well. So uh, it really does vary. Really does vary. Most of our most services finish within a year. You okay. know, uh, most of the time it's within a few few months. If the, if you can get see the person consistently, I would say two two or three months. Mm -hmm. If you're able to see them every two weeks or so, we try to do that. Um, for some of our consumers that live out in further areas, we may not be able to get them every other week sometimes it may take longer than that sometimes it 
unfortunately might be like a month in between just because of the long distances our staff are covering from, you know, you know, you, know, you might have be in Mobile, but you have to drive all the way to Jackson County, Alabama. So that's a pretty far distance. Those kinds of things may happen. That we may not be able to see you as often as we'd like to. Um, so it's more about the individual hours one on one than it is more one on one, yeah. Length like mm -hmm. of time, whether that takes a year, could mm -hmm. take a month. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the person as well. Like you know, you might be able to, to do a lot of things with someone who's sixty five and do several different things, but then with someone who's in their eighty five or older, depending on their, you know, their aptitude for it, you don't want to do too much at one time because it overwhelm them, frustrate them, that kind of thing. It really really varies. Uh, one thing that uh, comes up continually in the community is um, support groups, and it's very important, I think, for the community to support itself. Is that something that you see in Oasis, our support groups? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We, we, we have about close to 30 <coughs> support groups that we say that we're affiliated with. Our, our support groups are really peer support groups. We like for our consumers and fast consumers to really be the leaders of these groups. Uh, we have some great folks who, who either are our staff are able to sometimes to be able to help the group get started, to support it, to help them learn how it goes, but then we could pass it on sometimes to a peer, uh, one of our former consumers. We even have a, uh, Renee mentioned earlier, but she's got one of our support groups in North Alabama also. They kind of keep going. They meet, I think, quarterly. Um, we were meeting in person. Uh, with COVID-19, a lot of groups have gone to uh, telephone-based support groups. Uh, thankfully, our partners, the AID, AIDB, is one thing they got on top of very quickly was forming support groups for all their different areas because they have uh, nine different regional centers where they have case managers. And their case managers formed, uh, took their support groups that they were kind of managing and made telephone-based support groups. So we're trying to find ways to keep people connected with COVID-19 going on and because it's really important because they can, they learn so much from Jane, as you can see, and others of our staff, they learned so much from them. But as far as daily life and who feels like I feel, who's, who's experiencing the same thing, it means a lot for them to have peer support and have time to share mm -hmm. and to learn from each other. That's really important to us too. Yeah, I, I'm glad that you guys as an organization are continuing that. I think that's a really big thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, We all need our support network in, <clears throat> in all aspects of life. So, mm -hmm. um, I'd like to talk a little bit about fall risk assessment um, and I know that's part of the assessment when you go to the house there um, what exactly goes on during that um, and what are some options for that it depends on the individual again mm -hmm. so you know a lot of times somebody's using a walker um, and you have to change what you're going to do when somebody's using a walker um, but being um, as helpful as you can um, and reminding people over and over why it's so important to pay attention to how you sit in a chair, to move scatter rugs that are through the house that are trip hazards. Um, those are things that you talk to people about that sometimes it's not met with great pleasure. Yeah. Um, I don't want to move my rug that's been there yeah, forever. Exactly. It's the centerpiece of this room. Uh -huh. Right. So, you know, those are things that you know, if you can figure out another way to do it, you know, sometimes modify the home and make sure they're safe. Uh, you mentioned sit, how to properly sit in a chair a few times, and what exactly is that? It's very easy. You just have to make sure that you can feel the chair on the back of both of your legs before you sit. That corrects your posture pretty quick. Look, <laughs> 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 we think about my <laughs> trying. To, yeah. So I mean, you know, that's it's little and easy to do, but. So many times I see people in their homes, they'll feel one leg against the chair and start to sit, and they're going to fall over. Oh, yeah. So. And they're just missing the chair by mm -hmm. like a few inches on one mm -hmm. side, and the chair might slip. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I imagine one of the things that I would assess on a chair very quickly is if it's a roller, get rid of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a desk chair or something. Don't. Let's just change this up. Um, okay. We uh, have a few more minutes here left. And I would like for you guys to talk about Camp, is it Savvy? Camp Savvy. Savvy. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, we love acronyms here at the Department of Rehab <laughs> Services. So um, Camp Savvy stands for Seniors Adapting to Visual Impairment. It's a partnership that we have with the Alabama Institute for the Deaf and Blind. Um, 
it started with our stimulus funds we got back in 2011, and Jane was a big part of the, this getting started as well. Uh, we really had a vision of trying to bring our consumers together, a group of consumers together to not only learn about these wonderful things that we've shown here today, but to talk with me with each other kind of as a peer support group uh, to an extent also and learn about all these different things. And Camp Savvy typically goes to uh, each gentry and we have it usually about once a year, try to have about eight consumers. Mm. They get to bring a support person with them that could be there. Uh, we've had adult children, we've had spouses, we've had friends come with them. Uh, to learn all these different things. So they have different classes where they learn uh, about these different techniques and different things we've already shown today. They have time to uh, get in their own little peer groups between support people and our consumers. We have, they're, they're separate most of the day when they're going through classes so they can talk and share and learn come in separate groups, in small groups. Uh, you mentioned assessments too. One of the things that's unique about Camp Savvy is we're able to do Thanks to this, what they have at AIDB, we're able to do hearing assessments with them. Mm -hmm. uh, we're able to get students from the UAB, Department of Optometry, to come to do low vision assessments with them. Uh, also get to do some real introduction to them and the of technology. All those different things get to happen in, in one really crazy fun week. Um, and if we go out to eat and have activities at, at, on the evening times, and then doing things like playing bingo and uh, we've gone to the movies in Pell City and done the, uh, the uh, audio descriptions so they can enjoy, enjoy a movie and uh, just going out to eat. It's been a really great partnership with AIDB. We were actually going to take a break for 2020 anyhow and then COVID occurred. Yeah. Um, and we've really been thinking about trying to find ways to make it more local. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great program in Mobile one year. We were able to have some local folks um, do that with, with in partnership with AIDB down there at their regional center. So um, it's a great program. It's really something our staff know a lot about. And when we start having it again, our staff will refer uh, the appropriate folks to the program and we'll uh, work that out with them. They'll let folks know when we're having it. And they have to be consumers of Oasis mm -hmm. uh, to, in order to participate. Um, and you mentioned that it's a few days long there. How long is that? So it's a week. So it's Typically, you know, they, they come in on Sunday, Sunday evening, and then they leave on that Friday. Um, and for anybody thinking about it, what, what would you say they needed to budget for it? Travel? Well, we, that, thank you for bringing that up. We we're able to reimburse the cost for transportation to there. We provide uh, basic lodging at the Holiday Inn there. Um, so we call it camp, but you can stay at a hotel. Yeah. Um, but they get to come down and... There's really are no cost to the consumers uh, to partic participate. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I feel like that's a vacation where you're having fun, but you also have like a team of people around you saying, uh, you know, okay, we're going to help you out in this, you know, with some of the things, the challenges that you're receiving. I, I imagine that's like going to play in golf and then going to a spa. <laughs> you know, it's just well, like work on it. It's, it is fun, but it's a lot of work, and yeah. they, they do learn a lot. They have a lot. Uh, by Thursday, by Thursday or Friday, everybody's pretty tired. Yeah. But uh, we we have a really good time. We mentioned the the, sim the vision simulator uh, card there. One of the things that a lot of the families tend to get a lot out of is the uh, we have simulator goggles also, and we're able to try to simulate what their what their loved one is experiencing. Yeah. And a lot of times they get a lot out of that. It really there's a lot of epiphany moments that happen between yeah. family and their loved ones about. I didn't know how difficult it was, or I'm not going to help you so much anymore, too. Yeah. Because I, know, I know you can do it, because they do things like cooking with Jane. Uh, they learn how to make a simple pizza for themselves. Mm -hmm. They get to do a lot of variety of things that they mm -hmm. have maybe either said they couldn't do or thought they couldn't do, and they get to go back home with a kind of a renewed sense of uh, what's possible. In confidence. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. right. Uh, well, as we kind of wrap up the stream here, I'd like to ask, is there anything that we haven't talked about um, that you think somebody listening could benefit from hearing? We've really covered it really well. Yeah. I mean, you've seen all the amazing things that Jane teaches our consumers about, and you've seen the, the caring nature she has about it, and that's really, like I said, our staff, or what makes the program happen. And, um, 
it really makes it work and makes it successful. So uh, I don't know really how much more else to share other than that. Feel free to contact us, as we mentioned, the 1 800 number a few times at 1 800 671 6837. Also, you could go to our website uh, at rehab.alabama.gov. There's a contact place somewhere on that website. I'm not sure where exactly, but I've got several referrals through that website. And you could also look up on the website the local offices, and you can just ask for the OASIS program, and usually the receptionist is able to get you to the right person mm -hmm. that way as well. And is there anything upcoming that you would recommend uh, people join? I know, you know, the times we're not really having conferences or anything like that. I guess the next thing would be, <clears throat> when are you guys thinking about having the next camp? Is it 2021? Well, I really do think so. And what's my, my plan is really trying to work with our staff to try to find some local avenues to have that. Uh, we, we love coming to, to Chantry and Talladega, but now it's getting harder to get people to, to come to Talladega and travel. And now with COVID-19, I'm really mm -hmm. not sure how much, what, the, the, what the vibe is going to be um, for our consumers to want to be able to travel and be in a, a group setting. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, the vaccines are starting to go out to the older people, I think, next week. Uh, I think those are 75 and older mm -hmm. would be eligible to get the, the vaccine, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that came to my mind, you may have heard about this earlier before, I think they're working on the next technology symposium that's mm -hmm. in June. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure all the information about when it starts, um, but the dates yet, but I do believe our staff are involved in it. And a lot of these things about devices, I think they could talk about the kitchen-based uh, mm -hmm. technology and those kinds of things. And I think they're going to have like have a remote uh, version of it as well. That our smart home is what they're smart doing. the smart home. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you. So they're going to, it's going to be available online. I believe so. And they want to have it in person, but you know you don't. Th I don't think everybody's going to be vaccinated by June. And, yeah. And all that, but they're working <laughs> on something. Like I'll that. have to reach so out to them. Maybe we can get we'll down there and do some mm -hmm. uh, live yeah. stuff too. Mm -hmm. If they're not uh, doing it already, I think you met with Dana Barber uh, before. And she's, oh yeah. She's in charge. Of, she's one of the folks that's in charge of that too. I'm going to have to put that on the list to reach out to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, at this time, I want to thank you both for uh, spending the morning with us here today and informing us about Oasis and everything that you guys do. Um, one last thing. Uh, are you guys at capacity? Are you currently taking uh, consumers in? Uh, well, no, we're, we're not at capacity. We don't have anything like as far as a, like a, a we not major wait list or anything like that. We do have a referral list. So we may not be able to get to folks right away depending on the different areas and the different staff and their availability. But, but always feel free to contact us. Thank you for having us and being able to help us share the information about the OASIS program. It's really been a challenge now with COVID-19. We don't we normally get to go to senior fairs and those kinds of things. This is a really great avenue, and thank you all, whoever's watching out there today, for, for being a part of it. Well, heck, yeah. We appreciate you guys being here with us. <laughs> Um, thank you once again, and uh, for everybody watching, we will be back live on Thursday. So um, at this time, if you guys want to just kind of wave in the camera, and we'll do a quick countdown <laughs> at 2-1, and we will stop going live.